Hey folks, Rick Ballou here, live from Ballou Sports Bar. I'm part of 1010XL and 92.5 FM. We are the home of the Jags, where I will say Telvin Smith playing some good football. Mr. Green as well, the rookie, off to a great start. But today, as always, we're here to talk about Florida State. I do want to thank my peeps over in God's country, though. The brand new helmet, which was sent to me. Uh, boy, it's a beauty. I, I can't figure out if I like the old school one or this one better. I don't know. I'll have to have a few Miller lights and maybe a shot of Jameson and figure that out. Heck, maybe even a Bloody Mary to get things going this 1130 a.m. against South Florida. All right. Golson managed the football well in the first half. They pounded the rock with Cook, Pender. My goodness, are they talented. Maybe the most talented backfield they've had. Uh, and if you can put them in there at the same time as Jimbo did, Going back to the days of Warwick Dunn and Rock Preston and going back and watching the tape, when asked, they both do a nice job picking up a blitzer, coming on a pass protection. That's always very important, especially if you want to make a move into the National Football League. Cook, no doubt, can go. Pender, got to stay healthy, but you got to be a good pass blocker if you want to make it to the next level. No fans don't care about that right now. They care about winning another football game. I mean, after all, a one-game winning streak, right, after Oregon. And now 30 out of 31, the Knolls have won. I thought Golson, the way things went in the first half, learning the offense, taking what the defense will give you, keeping it simple, running the for, uh, football, short, effective, digging and dunking type of passes, and then, bam, flip the switch, second half, spread the ball all over, got everyone involved, very impressed with Golson, an A-plus for him in his initial start for Florida State. Overall, the offense, very good. Freddie Stevenson, so unheralded. Boy, is he a talented guy and a great lead blocker. That left side of the line with R and with Rojo, look like they have a ton of career starts. We'll still try to figure things out, center, right guard, right tackle. Is that patchwork at this point? Could other guys come back after injury? Is that going to be a weekly competition? I think overall against, let's be honest here, an inferior defense, uh, the center and right side, did well enough as far as I uh, am concerned. Now, Ryan Izzo, what a star. Okay, I'm not ready to anoint him into the category of Nick O'Leary, but here's what I got. Taller, stronger, faster, better blocker, and he looks like a freak athlete. Very impressed there. Bobo Wilson, Jimbo Fisher, continued to say that he had the best wide receiver camp of them all. Looks like he's going to be able to do that. Obviously, he takes over as the punt returner after the major problems they had hit there. And that was the biggest concern uh, overall, in my opinion, uh, with Florida State on their opening day victory was the overall special teams, which I do believe they'll be able to fix. But it's nice to see Bobo there with Rudolph. Now we'll see some of these young guys. Who is going to be the third guy? Who is going to be the fourth guy? Is it going to be Peg? Is it going to be the, the rookie, uh, the true freshman in Campbell? Uh, Ermon Lane is a fantastic blocker. Uh, downfield, got a couple of balls late. Kermit had a 30-yard reception. Overall, very happy what we saw with the offense. The defense is what really needs to be fixed. Yeah, you lost four juniors early to the National Football League draft, but they were really lacking in the leadership. All right? If you look at all the defensive players over the last several years who have gone to the NFL, also consider true leaders. Telvin Smith, LaMarcus Joyner, enormous in that category. Florida State missed that last year. Jalen Ramsey tried to take over those responsibilities as a sophomore. Uh, some upperclassmen didn't like it. Well, he's doing it now. This is his final year in Tallahassee. He's one of the best football players in the nation. And not only does he do it each and every play, he also does it with his leadership. It's nice to see some other kids step up. If you can get solid contributions out of fifth-year seniors, that is such a bonus. Brunus did that in the backfield. Newberry. Are you kidding me? All over the place. Added depth inside. I mean, he's a guy that I think every Noel fan kind of, you know, we wrote him off years ago. And, uh, hey, he made a mistake on the fake punt. He had outside contain. He got sucked inside. Uh, that's something that they'll work on in the future. But very happy to see number four Newberry out there contributing defensively. 42 pass att uh, attempts, one sack. That came from Trey Marshall. Okay. That was really not a team to get a lot of sacks against because Texas State, with their offense, got rid of the football quick. I noticed a little bit more push coming from the rookie Josh Sweat, coming from Jacob Pugh. 
uh, inside, getting, uh, again, more depth. Um, that was something that, uh, you know, seeing a little bit more of a guy like Christmas, who, who missed all of uh, last year after the, uh, the two games that he played uh, because of the injury. Some other guys uh, coming in there, like uh, Fred Jones, uh, playing well. So, you know, overall, some nice depth defensively. Want to see a little bit more out of someone like, let's say, Rick Leonard. Uh, looked a little bit uh, lost to me at some times, but did a nice job uh, holding the edge. The linebackers were all over the place, right? Northrop is healthy. That's a good sign. He's their hardest hitter. Terrence Smith was an absolute freak. He was all over the football field. If he can stay healthy, he's going to make them that much better. It looks like maybe they found some depth. Lions from right here in Jacksonville played well. Hodgkins played well, as well as uh, on special teams. Um, Phillips, who was kind of a late uh, member of last year's recruiting class, wearing number 35, came in and did some nice things as well. Overall, the secondary, tough to tell until they're really challenged against a good passing offense. I don't know if you'll really get a feel for that until, let's say, the Wake Forest game coming up in a couple of weeks. Obviously, Louisville and Miami are going to be able to throw the football as well. Uh, but I like what I'm seeing there. I think as we move forward, we'll get a little bit more of Derwin James. I think we'll get a little bit more of McFadden. Overall, you've got to be very happy about what Florida State did against a bad football team. They could have come out sluggish. They could have come out disinterested. They could have come out with the hangover of the tough loss at Oregon, the enormous off-the-field situations that took place uh, late in the summer. And the Jimbo Fisher uh, personal problems. Seems like they put all that away, were focused, went out, and played some good football. So that's a good thing. Also, no injuries. That's a big deal for Florida State. Boy, it's going to be early this Saturday, 11.30 a.m. South Florida goes in there. Remember the last time they rolled in? They went in there and won a football game. Okay? They are taking this team seriously. Florida State needs to continue to get better. Any coach will tell you the team will improve the most between week one and week two in the college football season. Hopefully for the Knowles, they'll continue to move forward, stay healthy, and then get ready for that Friday night game, which will be at Boston College. All right, we'll do it each and every week right here from Baloo Sports Bar. I'm on in Jacksonville on the radio each and every afternoon from 3 to 7. Uh, that is 1010XL on the AM side, 92.5 FM as well. You can hit me up on Twitter, please do, uh, Blue1010XL. And I'll also see you folks on the sidelines this weekend as the Jaguars get ready to play host to the Carolina Panthers. Have a great week. Be safe. We'll talk next week right here live from Blue Sports Bar.